Hey y'all, hey y'all, happy Monday, happy Monday. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Y'all sleeping? Samuel, Chanel, Jonathan, how y'all doing? While y'all on here, uh, I woke up with, uh-oh, uh-oh, you take something? Hey, Andrew.
Okay, everybody, go ahead and pull up your study guide from um, Thursday. Pull up your study guide from Thursday, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, everybody, the study guide that you need to pull up is, is in modules under exam review, and it will say exam review 3.1, because uh, on Thursday, we stopped off on number 35, so that was exam 3, so pull up exam 3.1, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, y'all let me know when you are ready, and I'm going to go ahead and begin. We're going to go ahead and get started. The other ones I have to catch up, because the reason I did the uh, class early is because um, I have a meeting today at 1045, so I'm having to bump up my second period as well. Give y'all about a minute. Okay, I am going to share my screen. 
So we're going to go ahead and do what we do. Let me pull it up. I hope I got the right one. Okay. Okay, so we will begin at number 36. When an advertising agency develops content for the website of a client, the writer should format the text so that it is easy for the visitors of the website to accomplish which goal? To order desired goods, to identify the tagline, to locate the relevant information, or to translate features into benefits. So the answer would be, C, locate relevant information. So what you want to do is when uh, advertising agency develops uh, a website, um, they want to make sure that the information is relevant to what they need, um, is easy to go to. So it will be C, locate relevant information. All right, 36. I'll give y'all a second to get that. Okay, let's move to 37. When writing letters for direct mail advertisements, the account executive responsible for promoting a team in the National Hockey League should perform which action? Would it be A, develop, co develop copy that is more in detail than in print advertisement? Write copy that would appeal to a mass audience? Attempt to depersonalize the message? Or will it be D, recognize that the results of the direct mail effort can't, cannot be measured? So what you want to do is you want to develop a copy that is in more detail than in print advertisement, than, than that in print advertisement. So um, it would be A, develop, develop copy that is in more detail than that in print advertisement. You're going to get more detail uh, because you are trying to um, Hit the target audience, you giving them a mail, you want to make it stand out more. You want to make it stand out more so they won't think it's just junk mail and throw it away. So 37 is A. 37 is A. I'll give you a second to get that. Do we have anybody new on here? If we have anybody new on here, just have um tell them uh, what we are doing. And just because I can't see who is on and just have them to put it in the chat when new people come on to uh, pull up the um, study guide in modules is 3.1, please. And I try to every so often. OK, 38. Can I get a volunteer for 38, please, to read 38? And let me know who you are because I can't see. The study guide call. Our uh, study guide is three point one. It's a three point one study guide. When developing the direct mail offer for sports or event products, it is important that the mailing piece includes which feature. See? Yes, you are correct. And like I said, I know some of this we have not had a chance to cover, but that is right. Designed to attract attention because direct mail is just that. It's direct mail is mail. So some people don't open up things and you've got to even um, design the outside of the envelope to attract their attention. So 38 would be C, designed to attract attention. So for those of you who are just getting on, you've only missed like the first three. Uh, two, so um, I will go back, or you can get with me a little bit later. We're now going to proceed to 39. Why is it important? And thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Um, 39. Why is it important for online businesses to write content 
for their website homepages that is interesting as well as concise. Concise meaning correct, meaning to the point. So why is it important for online businesses to write content for their website homepages that is interesting hey. as well as concise? Um, messages complex, complex almost. That's a good try, but it's going to be D. The space is limited. So when you're writing um, content for a website, like on the homepage, you have to remember that you have to um, chunk up what you want to say in fewer pieces, in fewer words. So the space is limited on the website because you don't want to have too much information on there that people are not going to read it. But thank you very much. I think it was Felix. Thank you very much. So thank you, Felix. And anybody else, y'all put it in the chat. Thank y'all. I cannot see it. I can go back later and look at it. Uh, 40. Let me move this down some. Okay. 40. When writing information to post on websites, online businesses should perform which action? Will it be to break the text into short uh, manageable sections with many um, headlines? Will it be, be to boost content appeal, interest with uh, quip stories and humor? Will it be C, use jargon and bulleted points to em emphasize important content? Or will it be D, to consolidate, excuse me, consolidate information by constructing long descriptive sentences? Your answer will be A, you're going to break the text into short, manageable sections with many headlines. So when you write information for websites, that's why people have the home page. They may have a contact us. They have different things on the side. Um, and that way people can go to that. Everything's just not on one page. So 40 will be A, break the text into short, manageable sections with many headlines. Forty one. Uh, one advantage of using email marketing is that it has which feature? Um, A, it's anonymous. B, it's profit-oriented. C, it's cost-effective. Or D, it's impersonal. Um, so advantage of using email marketing is well, um, cost-effective. Email marketing, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't co cost a probably not too much of anything to do marketing. Um, sometimes if you pay for advertisements or whatever, or um, and so email marketing is, is, is cheaper. So email marketing is uh, uh, very cheap. So, you, and you can reach a whole lot of people. So 41, we see cost effective. I get somebody to read 42. A business that asks customers to forward, to forward an email to their friends or associates is engaged in which type of activity? It's just like when y'all do, y'all see videos and it goes from one person to the next. What do you call that? Direct advertising. Good try. But what, what do you call that when a video has uh viral. has a lot of hits? Viral. So that'd be viral marketing. Business that asks customers to forward an email um to their friends or socials is engaging with it's gonna be viral because they're relying on the customers to uh move the uh email. So it's wanted to go viral, uh, meaning to get as many uh views on it. Uh, people are going to check it out, see what the email says. So viral marketing. But thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Felix. And Felix, I know that you were trying, uh, you were also volunteered to read 42. So will you read 43, please? One of the disadvantages to marketers using the streaming video email is that it requires every cooking to have which feature? Will be D. Good try, good uh, cloud computer, but it's going to be C. Um, it's going to be C, high speed internet connection. One of the disadvantages to marketers using streaming video email is that it requires a shipment to have the, the person um, 
that's receiving, I guess, the email to have high speed internet connection. So it will be C, high speed internet connection, because you want to be able to receive it. Because um, streaming, you know, you got, when you're streaming videos and stuff, your um, internet has to be pretty fast. Or you're going to miss out on some things or it may be lagging or whatever. But we all know technology. And even though, um, you know, I, I my internet is uh, fast, but sometimes it act crazy. So you can't even go by that now. But it should be a disadvantage is that um, you would want the recipient. Um, they don't have a high speed internet connection. So 44. Let me see if I can. have it all together 44 which is an example of a business using email in a timely manner which is an example of a business using email in a timely manner will it be um a describing features of expensive products b addressing messages to individual customers c sending customers a notice of sales for tomorrow d targeting groups that excuse me that subscribe to newsletters so which is an example of a business using email C. in a timely manner? C, sending um, customers a notice of sales for tomorrow. They have a deadline to meet, so they're sending it out in enough time. They probably send it out like uh, right now. They'll send out an email and then probably late night um, tonight, they will probably send out like another reminder. Because this is this is an example of getting letting them know of something that's going to happen soon. So 44 C. Thank you, Felix. 45, which is an example of an D. email attachment, which is an example. D. Say it again. Mm -hmm. uh, email attachment, email attachment. This is going to be, I guess, we're going into like a. Um, like a, uh, um, an email address or a website address. It's going to be an email attachment is your, uh, right here, the resume DOC. But good, but good try. I thank you so much. This is an email attachment. Anytime you see dot DOC, this is an email attachment. This is Nike.com is a website. This is uh, Smith at AOL.com is somebody's email address. So this email attachment is when you're sending the email. Oftentimes, when I send y'all an email, then I have an, a, doc, a document that I want you to view. Um, so the resume.doc, that is, and when I, uh, oftentimes I attach it, it should have that DOC on it. That lets you know that's an email attachment, meaning there's something else um, attached to the email that is that we, somebody wants you to look at. So 45 is B, resume.com. Oh, not resume.com, resume.doc, uh, excuse me. Okay. 46, which is the most common use of opt-in email? Opt-in is when you choose that you want to receive emails or uh, uh, somebody sends you emails about sales or whatever. Which is the most common use of an opt-in okay. email marketing? Um, that answer, say it again. Okay. A subscriptions. Yes, subscriptions are when you want um, uh, businesses to send you uh, information about sales, um, different things. So that's a subscription. Announcement is just that announcement. Attachment is when you're sending something um, via email. Confirmations are, say, for instance, I have set up um, an email, I'm not an email, a meeting today at two o'clock. So they've been sending me. Uh, confirmation since Friday when I told them um, we could do the meeting. So that's what a confirmation is. Or just let you know, hey, this is just to say that we decided to do this. But a subscription is when you sign up. Opt in means sign up. Opt out means you decide you don't want to do it anymore. So opt in is when you're saying to a company, if I have a company and I ask for your email address or you want to you provide your email address, that's saying that, yes, you want to receive marketing material from me about sales, about discounts, about, you know, whatever. So subscription is 46. 47, 
What mailing technique do businesses often use if they do not have software to process a mailing list? What mailing technique do businesses often use if they do mm -hmm. not have software to process a mailing list? I don't respond. Good, but it's going to be, and this one is a blind, um, it's going to be D, blind carbon copy. So what this is, is a blind carbon copy, uh, BCC, is you'll see that on email when you are sending something, but I probably would have chosen autoresponder, but um, it is a blind carbon copy is when other people cannot see it, um, but they're sending out stuff, so they're adding people. So it's a mailing technique um, business users, they do not have software to process the mailing list. It's a blind carbon copy. That's when they can uh, put so many people, say for instance, if they send it to you, um, but they have, uh, say for instance, Phyllis, if I send you an email, I'm a business, I send you an email, you're only going to see your name. But then in the BCC or the blind carbon copy, it's probably 100 other people. So that's just a way of getting out the email um, quicker, To but you don't have a mailing um uh, software like a lot of people when you receive emails from businesses i think it what is it um oh gosh contact uh mailchimp um then there's another one but mailchimp is where you can ask so many emails uh and when you do marketing things you can still it, send it out to so many people all at one time and i think on there you often see their other people's email addresses but with blind carbon copy, you do not see the other people's emails. You don't even know that um, their name is on that list that you just sent, got. So 48, I'm gonna help you out with 48, because like I said, some of these things are still, we have not um, covered, but I wanted to make sure that you are equipped with everything that is in school now. Which computer program prevents email messages containing the word free in the subject header from entering an inbox? So which computer program prevents email messages containing the word free in the subject reader header from entering an inbox? Um, that would be filters. So filters often weed out certain things that um, certain words or whatever, they'll filter that out. So what that means is if you have that word or whatever in, it may not send out that email. So the filter is when you um going through and they're seeing what words you're using, um, different things. And if it's not what they want or appropriate, then they take it out. So 48 is filters. Forty-nine for higher response rates. Businesses should develop marketing email messages that have which feature? Should it be short, simple, and understandable? Should it be re relevant, short, and complex? Should it be interesting, unique, and lengthy? Appealing, complex, and relevant. So for higher response rates, businesses should develop marketing email messages that have which feature? Complex. Anything that's complex, that means it's going to be a whole lot of something. You don't want a whole a. lot of something. Um, so you'll think. A. Hey, right, Felix. You want it short, simple, and understandable. That should be just about anything. You know me. I am short and to the point. Um, oftentimes when I send emails, some people who send out emails about things, you know, they have a lot of wording. I don't do all that. I try to make it short, simple, where people can understand it. Um, they don't have time to be reading links of emails, and I don't have time to be writing them. So I try to make it short, simple, and understandable. Understandable. You you do want it appealing. You don't want it complex. Because complex means it's a lot. And you notice it couldn't be C because C was saying interesting. Yes, we want it interesting. Unique. Yes, we want to be different, but we don't want it lengthy. B was relevant. Yes, we want it to be relevant to what um, the business is about or the email. We want it short, but we don't want it complex, meaning that it may be hard to understand. And sometimes it's a lot to it. So your answer will be short, simple, and understandable. 
That's what you want your email, some of the features of your email to be short, simple, and understandable. Because roll on to 50. What is a guideline for businesses to follow when creating mail lists? Would it be A, to obtain names from local competitors? B, identify all people in a certain area? C, choose individuals who want the email? Or would it be D, ask employees for names of relatives? You're create, creating mail li, uh, mailing list. So what do you want to do? You definitely don't want to do A. You don't want B. to do names. So what would it be? B. Uh, you know what? That would I, I that would definitely be on my list um, to do. But it is going to be you want to choose the individuals who want the email. Choose the individuals who want the email. So I guess you would have to do some type of survey or send something out to see if they wanted to opt in. So like a lot of times, maybe somebody who's ordered from you in the past. And when a lot of times when y'all uh, and, and me as well, when we buy things offline uh, or online with the business and then they ask you, do you want to start receiving newsletters or whatever? And we'll check that. So that means that we want their information. So we want to choose individuals who want the email, who've already said that they want the information. That way we have a stronger chance of them not opting out or maybe possibly passing on our information to somebody else. So 50 would be C, choose individuals who want the email. But Jonathan, thank you so much because I am in agreement with you also that I probably will identify all people in a certain area. Okay, so 51. The body of an email message. Let me move this down a little bit. All right, some of them went all together. So let's the body of an email message that reads, Dear Sue, we hope you are enjoying the newsletter. Is an example of which type of message? Is it understandable, um, compelling, focused, or personalized? What is it? Is it D? <laughs> It is. So it's going to be personalized because you notice it says Dear Sue. So even though probably even though it says Dear Sue is personalized, um, it's going to make it where the customer think that email was sent, um, especially for them, solely to them. But in reality, that, that email was sent out to somebody else probably and they just changed the name up. I often have done that as well. I put the, the person's name on it because I want to make and I do, I am so sincere about it, but I want them to know that um, I recognize them and they are a part of my business. But I also will oftentimes copy the same email and send it to another person because it cuts down on me having to manually type up everything. But it's personalized. When customers feel that they are, things are personalized to them, they're more opt to buy, they're more opt to return as a loyal customer. So 51 is personalized. Thank you, Felix. And anybody else who joined in, because I'm sure there's some other people. Um, for those of you who are just joining, please go to modules and under exam review, pull up the um, exam review that says 3.1. Remember on last Thursday, we stopped on number 35. So we just started on 36. Some of you, if you need the answers, get with me a little bit later. Um, I'm, I had class a little bit early because I do have another um, have a meeting that I scheduled. I made a mistake when I scheduled the meeting. So I'm having a class early for first and second period. So that's why we moved it up 15 minutes. I sent your email out on Friday. I sent out another one on yesterday, last night. So 52. Can I get somebody to read 52? What should business do to detect any problems before sending an email to everyone on their list? Will be B. Format the mess, yes, but it's going to be conducted test run. So, you want um conducted test run that may be 
uh, you want to see if it will if it will go out. So you want to send a test run to yourself or to like a um, I probably would send it to myself. Have myself on the list. Um, you want to conduct a test run, send it to yourself to see if um, how the email is going to look. So if you send it to yourself, you're going to see yes. If you have the format of the message, yes, that would definitely be one. And I do agree with you, Felix, also. But it's going to be conducted test run. So you want to see how the email looks, if everything is, um, if you the stuff that you want centered, if it's centered, if the um, illustration is correct, um, if the wording is correct. So you conduct a test run. Anytime, guys, that you have a business and you're sending out an email, send that email to yourself first, just like you were a regular customer, so you can view that email or that marketing, whatever that you're doing. You want to send it to yourself or send it to a close friend who can look at it and go from there. So it'll be conducted test run. But good answer, Felix. Thank you so much. Somebody please put it in the chat again. I know I just said it, but a lot of times everybody does not listen. So if you will put it, somebody type it in the um, chat to pull up exam review 3.1 in modules. Please pull up. Tell them that we're going over exam review 3.1. Now give everybody about another minute. And I do have, um, I'll tell you how to put the, um, attendance quiz in just a minute. Okay, let's roll on 253. And I'm going to bring that down. Okay, can I get somebody to read 53? Which is an advantage to a business of using an in house system to send bulk email messages? Is it D? Uh, good, good try, and and it probably will be a little bit lower, but it's going to be B. Last minute changes are possible when you are in house. Means um, you can change stuff up a lot of times if you use a company. But by now, uh, most companies should be reachable. But when you use an in house system, um, like within your company, you can make changes at the last minute. But if you send it to, you outsource your business. Um, your email uh, marketing to a company. Um, you're here in North Carolina, and the company may be in um, New York. Then you're gonna have to wait until they open up, um, and that's gonna cut down on when you can get the email out. But if you have somebody in house, all you gotta do is pick up the phone, say, "Look, I made a mistake on this. Can you change this?" So in house, last minute changes are possible, but upfront costs it, that could be a little bit too. It just depends. But well, 53 is B. But thank you so much, Felix. So 53 is B. Last minute changes are possible. 54. Our radio station sells a 30 second spot for $500. If the number of listeners is 200,000, what is the cost for 1,000? Now, that answer we have not went over, but I'm going to tell you. It, we probably won't have, if you have any, you won't have no more than two or three. You may not have any. 54 is going to be D, $2.50 per thousand. Wait, can thousand. you explain how? That one, we're going to have to go over that one. Give me a little bit. Um, I have done, that's the cost per minute. That's the cost per, CPM stands for cost per minute. Give me, um, Felix, send me an email and I will go over it. Um, I'm going to go over 54. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to skip because I want to be able to explain that cost per minute with you. Let me send me an email. We're going to go over 54, 55, 56. So put an email and I will show you. Uh, we will break it down. So we're dealing with the cost per minute on 54. 
55, we're dealing with the um, gross rate, gross rating points. Um, I say gross rate. So it's gross rating points. I will go over 54, 55, and 56. So send me an email and what I would do, um, I would go over that. Um, I try to go over it tomorrow. It may be Wednesday. So uh, Felix, send me an email um, asking me to go over 54 through 57. So we're going to skip 54. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answers and then we're going to go over it because I want to be able to, to explain it to you. So 54 is going to be 250, although I'm going to give you the answers. We will go over it because I want to cover that with you. 55, an advertiser spent $117,000 for 12 um, television spots with a total of 240 GRPs, which is gross rating points. What well, was the cost per gross rating points? And the answer is going to be $487.50. So I will do my best to explain that one. If I find that we have any technical difficulties, I'll let you know. It's been a while, but I want to make sure that I cover it. So, 50, so that's um, 54 is 250. 55 is 487. Hopefully you won't have, if you do, you shouldn't have no more than one or two. Um, you may not have any. 56, what percentage? What is the percentage of reach? That means how many people are you going to reach for a local radio sporting goods advertisement if the target audience is 875,000, 18 to 30 year old males, and 303,500 of the target audience is exposed to the message. So what kind of reach, how much reach? Reach depends on where you advertise and they're advertising with a local radio sporting goods. They're advertising by a local um, local radio to sport goods advertisement. So the reach means how many people are you going to actually come in contact with? That depends on where you're advertising, how, how you're advertising, um, and how many uh, places does... Um, so let me see, hold on. So that just appears. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, let me get back to this so I can show y'all where I was at. Uh, bear with me, y'all. Okay. So um, the reach. Did I go back? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. I want to make sure because I know I had went off again. Okay, so um, the reach just depends on how many people you're reaching. Like it just depends, like radio stations, um, newspapers. Each one of those have different amounts of people that can be reached. So um, fifty six is going to be C. Um, the percentage will be thirty five percent. The percentage would be 35%. 35%, not too bad. 35%, um, not too bad on the target audience, audience, but of the reach, but we won't um, definitely know anything we want it to be high. But 35% is not too bad. So 56 is um, 35. And again, I will um, do my best to go over those for you. Especially um, 55. 54 and 55. Okay, 57. 57. Which type of media should an event planner use to promote an up upcoming local charity event to the general public? Now, you, uh, the event planner is a person that's going to host an event uh, for a local charity event. So how, how should, um, what type of media should they use if they want to reach the general public? Just everybody in general will it be direct mail local television national newspaper consumer um magazine it's local 
So how how are they gonna reach a lot of people about mm -hmm. a charity event? B, local television, because they're going to do it through advertising, um, on TV. Um, so they're going to, uh, local television. You probably also would want to put it on the local um, news station. So they, um, all news stations that we watch, like um, W, um, Fox News, Channel 2, all of them have a website. Say, for instance, if you have a charity, uh, or your place of worship, uh, whatever, um, they have a place that you can go on there and put your information in, and they'll advertise it on the website. Oftentimes, they'll put it on, um, you'll see it pop up on their, um, on their upcoming events to local news stations. 58, a business that asks to have an, have an advertising an advertisement presented at a specific time on the air or in a special place in a newspaper will most likely have which experience? A business that asks to have an advertising presented at a specific time on the air or in a special place in a newspaper will most likely have which experience? Uh, D. Both uh, uh, Thank you, Jonathan and uh, uh, D was the answer, and uh, thank you, Felix. But the answer was D. They will pay a higher price for the ad. They'll pay a higher price. Anytime you are asking for a specific time and a specific a specific location, you are going to pay higher than when you would just let the ad play uh, on um, if it's on on TV or on the radio at whatever time. Um, the prices would be lower if you're asking for a special section in the newspaper that means that you're going to have to pay some money because whoever normally advertises there on a regular basis you may be bumping them down to a, a smaller print or they have to go on another page so you're going to have to pay for that Thank y'all so much. 59, a business wants to sell a shipment of goods by the end of the current work week at the lowest possible advertising cost. Which form of promotional media would be the best to use? The answer is going to be radio spot commercials. So what they want to do, the radio spot, because it's going to get it out. Um, because and add in, in the next paper. So what they this business wants to sell a shipment of goods by the end of the current work week. So that means they're working on uh, working on a time frame. They're working on a deadline at the lowest possible advertising cost. Well, one, you know, A is not gonna be because the next paper might not come out till next week. Uh, a direct mail, um, not everybody's gonna open up direct direct mail because if it's not a bill which we don't want to open up or something that you know we think is important then a lot of people don't open up the mail to two and three a month later and by that time that special has gone off point of purchase displays are when you are in a store and you see things right there like you at the you at the cash register like when i go to um office depot that's one of my favorite places. When I go to Office Depot, and when I'm in line, they have all these different kinds of pins. Pins are right there. I love pins. Sharpies or different kinds of little gadgets. They have a price point at a certain price. That's that's for when the person's at the checkout. They're waiting to be checked out. They're going to start looking at their stuff. They go, okay, I need that pin. I'll I pick up one of those. Oh, they got it in this color. So it's a point of purchase display. They're going to have stuff displayed so you'll buy. That's not going to help you if you're trying to get trying to sell something, um, shipping of goods by the end of the month, by the end of the work week. Because it just depends that person may not go into that store uh, every day. So radio spot commercials, radio goes on every day. And you oftentimes hear the same commercials or advertisements over and over. So radio spot is, is going to be the cheapest. Um, it's probably going to be the most cost effective. And it's going to be the quickest way. So radio spot commercial. How many of y'all listen to the radio? Do a lot of y'all listen to the radio? I don't know how y'all do because 
So y'all listen to the radio. So if you listen to the radio, hopefully you pay it to the advertisement. Sometimes, a lot of times I don't. Um, I think the majority of the stuff that I listen to on the radio advertisements are if they're talking about a concert or something. Sometimes I'll listen, i tune in uh, to a commercial. So it just depends. 60. A business owner who wants to obtain a reduced rate for a series of local radio commercials might contract for what type of promotion? They're going to do more than one uh, commercial. So they, so if they do more than one, then that business should uh, offer them a deal. So what do they want? Are they wanting a package, a display, transit, uh, or uh, con contingent? Hey. They are wanting a what? Hey, thank you. Uh, Felix, I think somebody else was going to answer too. Was it Jonathan? <laughs> but thank you, Felix. Our package, they are wanting a package. So um, it, most of the time, anytime uh, um, like commercials or advertisements, when you wanted to advertise or do a commercial, they have packages. They have a certain amount. And this is what, you know, they may, with the package, you may be able to advertise two or three times a day. Okay, so 60 is package. Let's roll to 61. A business owner, um, a business owner save money by contract contracting with the local newspaper to purchase a series of ads over a period of time. The business is entitled to which return. This is something you don't know either, I don't believe. A business owner save money by contracting with the local newspaper to purchase a series of ads over a period of time. The business in, is entitled to which return? It's gonna be a volume discount, a volume discount, because volume means how much. So they're gonna be entitled to a volume discount because they're doing, your keywords were a series of ads over a period of time, okay? That was your keywords, so it's gonna be volume discount. Okay, so volume discount. Let's move to 62. Now I'm gonna bring that down so all of the answers uh, will be together. 62, what is an important factor in determining rates for outdoor advertising? What is an important factor in determining rates for outdoor advertising? Will it be short life, ease of replacement, the visibility, C. or the artistic appeal? Okay, we're dealing with C. I, uh, we're dealing with, so you want to make sure that the visibility is there. People have got to be able to see what you're doing, got to have a clear view. A lot of times when you're doing advertising, you got to make sure that the visibility is there, that the elements are um, right. The um, the weather is uh, cooperating. The scenery um, is what it should be relevant to what you're advertising. Um, everything. So visibility. People have got to be able to see, be able to visualize. You don't want to be doing an advertising out in a junkyard and you're talking about outdoor equipment. Okay. You want to make sure that the items that are that are seen in the advertisement are relevant to what you're talking about. So 62 is going to be visibility. 63, a sports or an event organization can determine advertising reach of a magazine by analyzing which component of the publication. This is going to be so a sport or an event organization can determine advertising reach of a magazine by analyzing which component of the publication. Will it be billing cycle? Will it be the circulation? Will it be the finances or the response mode? So we're dealing with um, advertising magazine. So your magazine is dealing with what? When you're talking about a magazine, 
It's gonna be dealing with what? B circulation. Circulation means where um where is that magazine? Where is it circulating to? Meaning the areas. Where is not everybody, um, not every area um that you're trying to target um may um subscribe to that magazine. Not if um me. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, and I think it's it's a great thing. But I don't do outdoor um outdoor um sporting um sporting equipment. So um anything that's dealing with outdoors, like the Fisherman's Magazine, although I think it's great. I often when I go into a certain place, I look at them. But um anything dealing with outdoor, like outdoor sporting, like fishing, uh, boating. Um, I think those, those are all great, but they don't appeal to me. So I may not would ever subscribe to that magazine. So you got to make sure uh, whatever um, the, the reach of the magazine is, it's going to be something that everybody's going to want to um, subscribe and to. You go back to so the circulation. 61. Go back to 61. 61 was volume discount. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to, let's move to 64. Let me move this down. Okay. So 64, I don't believe you have one like this where we will go, oh, um, I will give you the answer. And then I also look into this one. The Fit and Lively Fitness Center wants to increase its membership. So they're wanting to increase their membership. So it's planning to run a television ad to promote lower membership fees for a limited time. You know, the famous um, Planet Fitness does this all the time. If the target audience is 939,000, people and the age range is going to be 16 to 36 16 to 36 year old females and then 313,000 of the target audience is exposed to the message what is the percentage of reach for a local cable television advertisement it is going to be b which is 33% that's the percentage not too bad but it can always be a little bit higher i think I think most definitely it could be high. So 64 is 33%. This is one of the other ones that we'll um, do our best to cover. Okay, 65. What is the most appropriate media scheduling strategy for advertising food and other frequently purchased items, whether it be continuous, fighting, pulsing, or inter uh, intermittent. Intermittent. Uh, that would be what is the most appropriate media scheduling strategy when you're advertising food. You want to make it a continuous. You want to keep uh, keep it going um, continuous, not just have it advertised. Um, today which is monday you don't advertise it again to the end of the month especially with, when you're dealing with food because a lot of times when you're dealing with food it's a special promotion for a limited time so when a limited time you got to keep those advertisements coming back to back also you um it may be like i said it's a special offer or it's during a certain a certain season like for christmas like um with starbucks they have uh, a couple of specialty drinks that are, they they only come out with during Christmas. So they want those advertisements to be continuous. So they those sales on those special drinks will be high. And that way they'll be able to know um, if this special drink only offered at Christmas, is it one they want to bring back every Christmas season? So um, continuous will be 65. Which media vehicle might a sports or an event marketer choose to promote a celebrity baseball game to many people 
throughout a metropolitan area. It would be um, so a media vehicle. So we've seen this um, um, advertising, a, um, promoting a celebrity baseball game to many people throughout a metropolitan area. So this is a media vehicle. You see vehicles going around and they have what you call the, um, the advertising wraps on them. They advertise th different things. Or a lot of you have seen the trucks and the advertisements change. Every couple of seconds, you'll see one advertisement on that van or um, bus. But then you blink your eye, they've changed. So that is part of a movable billboard. It's called a movable billboard. So 66 would be a movable billboard. Okay. And I know that we only have about six more. What we are going to do, guys, I am going to stop it right here. And the reason that I say I'm going to stop it right here is um, I have I bumped up my second period because, I, like I said, I made a scheduling error uh, with the meeting. So we will pick back up on 67 tomorrow, and then we should be begin covering objective 4.0. So by Wednesday, I think Wednesday, we should be finished. Um, so I hope um, I only have 12 on you today. I don't know where everybody is. But good morning to all. Good morning to all. So we will pick back up on 67. Somebody remind me. And uh, I'm the attendance quiz is ready. Let me put that in there. Y'all do the attendance quiz. Do the attendance quiz. You don't have to. You can do it. Um, make sure you read it. It's something I want you to give me some information on. Okay. So let's get that done. And I will talk with y'all guys on tomorrow. Tennis quiz is ready, okay? So I will talk with y'all guys on tomorrow. All right, guys? Regular time, class tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> Phoenix. Bye, everybody. Johnson, hope you get to feeling better. Nazani, I will get with you. Bye, Andrew, Sebastian, Shamil.